Hey everyone, welcome back to MNMM PT and Nati YouTube channel. This is Manmohit, teaching PT and Nati Hindi and Punjabi from over five years now alongside Mohit. In today's video, I would be covering up four important things in regards to read aloud topic. The very first one would be the normal basics of this topic. Second would be how many marks do you get out of this topic as in how important is this particular topic. Third would be the best latest method that you guys need to follow in order to secure a perfect 90 out of 90 in this particular topic. And then last but not the least would be things to avoid while doing this topic in your real exam. So now I will go over to my whiteboard and I'll explain you from the very first part. Now read aloud as the name says, let's understand the meaning of the topic first. Read aloud. It simply means reading something out aloud as in loudly. Now this is what happens in this particular task that a small paragraph would be given to you on your screen and then computer is expecting you to speak out that same paragraph in the exact same manner. That means we don't have to paraphrase that stuff. We don't have to add any new words from our side. We don't have to use any vocabulary from our side. We just speak out whatever it's given in front of us. Now, since it's part of the speaking, which is that means it's your very first topic in the exam, it doesn't really mean that you will still be getting marks in your speaking. Alongside speaking, you do get marks in your reading section as well. Now you might ask me why getting marks in reading because clearly it's a speaking task. Now the reason Pearson is giving you marks in the reading section is that since there is a paragraph which you are reading out first and then you are trying to speak it out, that is why in this way Pearson will be able to figure out that how good is your reading skill and how good is your speaking skill alongside. In the exam for this particular topic you can expect either six questions or seven different questions coming one after one after one. That means in the exam the topics are not jumbled, they come in the sequence. Secondly, they will not be adding any questions from some other topics and then just playing around with different topics, doing any sort of surprises in front of you. If the read aloud topic is going on, there would be either six or seven questions coming one after one. Since it's a speaking task, they would be giving you some sort of preparation time beforehand. That means they're not going to play or they're not going to start the recording literally straight away. They'll give you some time to prepare. And that is going to be anything out of it. That means they can either give you 30 seconds, they can either give you 35 seconds, or depending on the length and difficulty of the paragraph, they might end up giving 40 seconds to you. Once the preparation time is over, that is when the recording timer will start. And that time is again going to be 30, 35 or 40 seconds. So my point here is, if you get 30 seconds to prepare, you would be given 30 seconds to answer. If you get 35 seconds to prepare, you would be given 35 seconds to answer and same goes with 40 seconds. One thing we need to understand in between preparation time and before the beginning of recording time is that there will be a beep sound that will indicate that the recording has started. So once on your screen, it says beginning in three, two, one, recording doesn't start straight away, you will be listening to a beep sound in your earphones or the headphones that you would be wearing. And that would be a clear indication that the recording has started now. And once the recording time is over, for example, if this is your exam screen, so I'm just making a rough sketch of it. On the bottom right corner, you will have this next button. Once you're done with when once you are done with recording your answer, you can just click on this next button and obviously you can then proceed towards the next question. Keep one thing in mind in the Pearson exam that once you go to the next question, you just cannot go back in the entire exam. Once it's done, it's done. So only click on next if you are definitely sure that you are done with the answer. Since we are stressing a lot about this topic, let's understand how important is this in terms of numbers. Now we all know that our exam is marked out of 90. And since we know one thing until now that you will be getting marks in speaking and reading section both. Now listen to this part very carefully. In speaking, 
you would be getting approximately 15 to 20 marks out of 90. Now, these are not some just numbers created by us. We have actually given a lot of exams. Me personally have given about 21, 22 exams until now. And this is what we have found out that if you just do this topic in the exam, well, you will be able to fetch approximately 15 to 20 marks out of 90. But the funny part here is that the very same topic in your reading section is worth 35 to 40 marks out of 90. So even though it's more of a speaking task, it is still going to give you approximately three times more marks in your reading as compared to speaking. So this is one thing that students struggle a lot in the reading section, especially that they keep on working towards their fill in the blanks, reading, reading, writing, and all those topics which are covered in your reading part, but they take read aloud for granted thinking that, okay, it's just a small paragraph, which is in front of me. And my job is to just speak it out. I'll be okay with that. Understand one thing. If a topic is giving you three times more marks in reading as compared to speaking, definitely there's something more into it. Let's see how this topic is being scored in the real PT exam. If I talk about the scoring of this particular topic, it can be divided into three different parts. That is fluency, pronunciation, and content. Each component is worth five points. Now I'm not saying five marks, I'm saying five points. That means this is just a number, or you can say it's a scale from one to five, like this. So obviously one being the lowest in the scale and five being the highest and then pronunciation and then content. Now, what do we understand by fluency? Different people have different definitions of the word fluency. Obviously dictionary will have a different meaning of the word fluency as compared to if I talk about a rapper or if I talk about a singer, obviously they would be having a different meaning of the word fluency. In the real PT exam, the word fluency simply refers to the smoothness of your speech. It has nothing to do with your speed. It has nothing to do with your volume or anything. That's all part of your pronunciation. Fluency simply refers to the smoothness of your speech. If I give you an example right now, for example, if I say Adelaide is a beautiful city. Now there are two ways of speaking the sentence out. I can say Adelaide is a beautiful city. Or there's another way I can say the same sentence and that is Adelaide is a beautiful city. In both of these versions, you would have seen one thing and that is the difference in the speed. But in the real exam, which version would be getting more marks in fluency? The answer is both. So this is one thing that I want to clear out and especially because of a lot of misconceptions out there that the quicker you speak, the more marks you get. Nothing like that happens. If you go to Pearson's official website and if you go with their score guide, the official score guide PDF that has been given by them, it has 72 pages. And if you scroll down a bit, you would be able to see the real scoring of read aloud as in how does a Pearson actually analyzes and give you marks for this particular topic. So we'll go by the rules. We'll go by the books. Fluency simply means you have to be smooth in your speech. If I were to say the same sentence like this now, Adelaide uh, is a beautiful city. Now, when I speak this way, I'm definitely stuttering a lot. Plus I'm taking those fillers into consideration. I'm speaking, uh, um, these kind of things. Plus I'm speaking a couple of words and I'm taking a pause in between and kind of thinking that what was the next word, these things are not allowed in your fluency. Obviously you will lose a lot of marks for that. So you need to make sure of one thing that your speech has to be very smooth. Now, what speed should be the ideal speed to speak in your read aloud? The answer is it depends on person to person. Everyone has their natural speed. The easiest definition would be the speed at which you guys speak your mother tongue is the exact speed that which you need to speak your English language. I'll repeat myself. The speed at which you speak your mother tongue is the exact speed at which you will be speaking the English language.
So we don't have to manipulate our speed in order to get more marks. We just have to speak naturally. Next thing is pronunciation. Now pronunciation simply refers to being loud and clear. Loud, now loud doesn't mean you have to scream at the top of your voice in the exam. Loud simply means just be naturally loud in the exam. Again, natural loud, since you're wearing the microphone and the headphones in the exam, the microphone would be right next to your face. So in order to get more marks, you don't have to be a lot louder. You just speak at your natural volume. As in, for example, consider that you have a friend sitting in front of you. The exact speed, the exact volume that you would be talking to each other is your natural volume and you have to follow the exact same one. Now clear means clarity. This is extremely important and this is kind of a decider as in do you just smash this topic out in the exam or this topic smashes you. Clear clarity. Now some people have a habit of whenever they speak in their real life, they speak with their mouth closed like this. Adelaide is a beautiful city. I love Adelaide. Today is a bright sunny day in Adelaide. Now if you speak with your mouth closed, you would have noticed one thing right now that my fluency was there but i wasn't clear enough my words the syllable sounds were not coming out clearly in order to fetch a perfect score in your pronunciation part you guys need to make sure of one thing that you're speaking extremely clearly and the easiest way is just open up your mouth as wide as possible in front of a computer so that whenever the words come out of your mouth they should sound very clear and concise clarity plays an important game Last but not the least is content. Now content obviously refers to whatever it's given in front of you. It's your content. In order to get a full score in the content part, we definitely cannot add any new words. We definitely cannot skip any words which are given in, the, in that particular paragraph. And we need to make sure we are not flipping the sequence of the words. We are maintaining the sequence. We are maintaining the clarity of the words. We are maintaining the accuracy of the words. If all these things are met, you will be able to get a perfect score in your content part. One thing before we move on is what if during you are speaking a paragraph, you make a mistake. Now, if you make a mistake, just consider one thing, the damage is already done. That means there is no chance for you to correct your mistake again. You can't say sorry or my apologies. I beg your pardon. Can I correct myself? Nothing like that works in PT exam. Once you make a mistake, simple thumb up rule is that you make a mistake, you ignored the mistake and you move on. I'll repeat myself again. You make the mistake, you ignored the mistake and you move on. There is no coming back. If you decide to stop there and if you decide to correct yourself, just consider one thing. You're just damaging or you're just extending the damage further. It is not going to help you in increasing your marks. It's already done. So ignore and move on. One final thing before I speak a sample answer, before I show you how to do it in a perfect way is your stressing and intonations. Now you might be familiar with these words or maybe you haven't heard these words before. Absolutely fine. Let's understand what these words are. The first word stressing. Now, if you just go by the normal default meaning of this word, Stressing means to stress on what certain words. It simply refers to that whatever important key words that you find in a paragraph, your job is to stress upon that. It means your job is to highlight those words or in easy words, your job is to speak those words out loudly. Adelaide is a beautiful city. I can see the word Adelaide is a key word. It's an important word. Beautiful is an important word. City is an important word. So when I speak out my answer, I need to make sure I emphasize on these three words. Adelaide is a beautiful city versus Adelaide is a beautiful city. I hope you're getting the point here. How important is stressing? And this is an actual difference between a person getting a full score in read aloud versus a person barely passing their read aloud. Stressing is extremely important. And then we have his intonations. Intonations simply refer to, for example, 
By looking at this, what do you understand? What do you derive from it? It looks like your heartbeat in the hospital. This is what it looks like. In the exam, we don't have to speak or let's say we can't speak like a robot. We can't speak like a machine. We can't sound robotic. Computer will be able to figure that out and then they will definitely deduct a lot of marks for that. We have to have the rhythm in our voice. If a word is important, we have to take our voice louder. If a word is not important, we have to make sure that we are speaking it out flat. If another word is important, we are again taking our voice louder. If a word is depressing or if a word is a negative intonating word, that means we need to lower our volume as well on certain words. What sort of words? Any negative sort of words if you think about. But, however, though, although, anything which denotes something negative or something down going on, you need to lower your volume. So rising intonation patterns and falling intonation patterns, these two patterns have to be followed. When I speak out the sample answer, I'll be doing these things. So we'll be understanding in a bit more better way. But for now, this is the meaning of the word intonation. Now let's go to the last and the final step. And that is how do we use all these things in a paragraph? Now, if until now you are still unsure about certain things that I've said, the best part about YouTube is that you can just go reverse to your video. You can just go a bit back. You can listen to the audio. You can listen to the video again and again. And once you get the hang of all these little components that I've explained, that's when you resume the further part. Now, Let's see how do we speak out a paragraph in the real exam. So for example, I have this paragraph with me in the real exam. First of all, this is not something created by me. This is an actual exam paragraph that has come multiple times. Multiple is just a small word. It's, it has actually come a lot, a lot of times in the last at least five years. Now, how do we use all these things in the exam? The paragraph says, how do we imagine the unimaginable? If we are, first of all, the word here is many people speak this word wrong. This is not we are, this is wrong. This is we are, not we are, we are. So if they have given a poster of a yes in the word, we have to make sure we speak it out as exactly the way it has been written. We are not going to stretch and expand the word. We are means we are, not we are. Asked to think of an object, say a yellow tulip, a picture immediately forms in our mind's eye. But what if we try to imagine a concept such as the square root of negative number? Now remember the preparation time that you guys were getting 30, 35 or 40 seconds. This is what I would be doing in the exam. I would be utilizing every single second out there. I'm not going to just sit there silently waiting for the recording to start and then make 10 mistakes and fumble a lot. I would be utilizing every single second in preparation time so that when the recording starts, I sound extremely confident. If you look at few things in this paragraph, first thing is I can see a little question mark at the back. That means it's a question. If something is a question, when I speak it out, I need to sound like a question. There are two ways of speaking out the first sentence. How do we imagine the unimaginable versus how do we imagine the unimaginable? If you get the difference in these two, that means you're actually following me up here. We can't sound robotic. We can't sound flat in order to get a full score. Now I'm not talking about 50, 65 or 79. We are aiming for a perfect 90 here. To get a perfect score, we need to make sure whatever is given to us, we are just following exactly the same things. Question means question. It doesn't mean an answer, obviously. How do we imagine the unimaginable? If we are asked, now if you look at the back of this word, they have given D. That means it's a past tense verb. Now. If you try to speak it out in a bit quicker, speedy way, you might end up missing that D sound at the back. I might say, if you're asked to think of an object, if you look carefully, I didn't really speak out that D sound. Now I might sound a lot fluent, but obviously I would be losing a lot of marks in my pronunciation because of that. So I'll make sure that I speak at my natural speed and natural volume. 
so that my these sounds d e d s e s singular plural past present all these sounds are being taken out properly if we are asked to think of an object if we are asked to think of an object that d sound at the back is extremely important say then there is a comma now another thing that say a yellow tulip a picture immediately this is wrong and the reason is i can see few punctuation marks given in there after the word say they have given a comma after the word tulip they have given a hyphen wherever now that's another thumb of rule wherever you see any sort of punctuations given any commas full stops hyphen slash forward slash backward slash any sort of punctuations being given we have to follow them we have to make sure we take a slight pause and only then move on if you speak out the complete paragraph in one breath guess what you're just manipulating or you're just kind of reverting the meaning of or defeating the purpose of this entire topic we have to make sure that we follow these punctuations if we are asked to think of an object say a yellow tulip a picture immediately forms in our mind's eye there's a full stop after that but what if we try to imagine a concept such as the square root of negative number again if you remember there's a question mark at the back we have to sound like a question now i'll speak out the complete paragraph in one breath as in in one go so you guys understand and know that how do we do that in the actual exam starting now how do we imagine the unimaginable if we are asked to think of an object say a yellow tulip a picture immediately forms in our mind's eye but what if we try to imagine a concept such as the square root of negative number so i would encourage all of you to just reverse this video for 20 25 seconds and listen to my answer multiple times and then relate it with the notes that you have taken that that those intonation patterns those uh, stressing on the words all those things all those basic theory things compare those things with the sample answer that i've spoken and see did i follow all those things or not was i stressing on the important words yes i was how do we imagine the unimaginable whenever i saw those important words i made sure that i took my voice a bit louder on them was i intonating in the paragraph absolutely yes wherever i saw a question i sounded like a question wherever i saw some important words like immediately immediately means something sudden i again took my voice a bit louder so all these things have to be taken care of the word but it's a negative word i lowered my voice a bit but what if we try to imagine but what if we try to imagine then was i speaking very quickly not at all i was just speaking at a natural speed i wasn't trying to speed up at all was i at my natural volume absolutely i wasn't screaming at the top of my voice and obviously i wasn't whispering in someone's ears so you need to understand one more thing that we are not whispering in anyone's ears and also we are not screaming at the top of our voice you have to find a balance in between both of your variations and then did i take any pause did i take any irrelevant pause or did i uh, fumble or did i use um, uh, uh, these these kind of fillers or uh, i'm sorry these kind of fillers absolutely not because i know if i try to use them these are natural sounding but then computer will not consider them natural they will deduct marks for that and last but not the least in this video is things to avoid in the exam obviously the very first thing to avoid in the exam would be to making sure that you're not speaking at the top of your voice because what happens in the exam is if you start screaming or if you start speaking extremely loudly the invigilator will come inside and they will give you a warning first warning and second warning they will just ask you to leave now even if they just come inside and give you the warning they will kind of interrupt you during the live exam and if they interrupt you you can simply just consider that your confidence level will go so down so never let that happen do not scream at the top of your voice just because other people who are sitting next to you they are doing it it's their exam they are just ruining it for themselves do not ruin your exam for yourself that's the very first thing another thing is 
do not fall for those misconceptions or traps which are out there just to secure your money just to grab your money from you like the things have changed the algorithm has changed nothing like that has happened in the last five years no algorithms have changed they do change the scoring criteria of the topics like they might increase or decrease the marks which are being held now but they're they're not going to change they haven't changed in the last five years the way we do a certain topic so this is the latest method they do change a bit of scoring every now and then they might make few changes but if they do we guys would be definitely the first one to take those things out and just give you the latest information out there we study these score guides from pearson official score guides from pearson on a very regular basis if we find out any sort of changes being made we'll definitely update it on the channel as soon as possible so for now it's absolutely working there are no changes that's the latest method which is working and one more thing to avoid in the exam is never ever ever start your exam without checking your headphones and the microphone people due to they are panicking in the exam they tend to kind of skip this step skip the most important step of their exam and that is checking their microphone and checking their headphone because if you do not check your microphone or headphone properly in the exam guess what you're just manipulating your entire exam for no reason doesn't matter how good of a speaker you are doesn't matter how well your exam went if the microphone was not at an optimal level you're not going to get your desired scores especially in speaking reading and listening because all these topics are literally attached and synced towards your speaking part so checking the microphone and headphone is extremely important i would be coming up with another video very soon about especially about discussing the microphone in the exam which microphone is being used currently how to put the microphone at the correct position the correct microphone position all those things would be explained in one of the videos that i'll be coming up with in the future i hope you like this video and i hope you find a bit of value in this particular video do watch this video again and again to gain the perspective of how this topic is being scored and how do we do this topic in the correct way and obviously if you have any sort of questions in regards to this topic do make sure that you put that down in the comment section below underneath this video and we guys would be definitely uh, would be the first ones to just answer all your questions and if you want to connect with us further you can definitely follow us on instagram the link would be definitely down in the description do check that out and with that i'll take leave for today i hope you guys have a great day and i will see you guys in the next video